Good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode five of Norris Lee TV. Coming up in tonight's show, Sir Lloyd Dorfman speaks to Rabbi Friedman. We meet via Zoom, 104-year-old Anita Cat, and Avrami gets traditional. Yes, at Norris Lee TV, we always try to stay topical. This week, St. Paul's Cathedral launched a multi-faith virtual memorial to remember those who have died during this pandemic. It was developed by Sir Lloyd Dorfman and endorsed by the Chief Rabbi. We are honored here to have Lloyd Dorfman in conversation with Rabbi Daniel Friedman. Over to you. Sir Lloyd Dorfman, what an honor to have you here on Norris Lee TV. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, so Lloyd, you are no stranger to Hampstead Garden Suburb Synagogue. Uh, your daughters, grandchildren, uh, we've seen you for Simchas, and uh, such an honor now to be talking uh, communal activities with you, and a man who is so devoted to community between CST and Prince's Trust, and, and all of the things that you've always, your philanthropic activities, it's, it's an honor to have you on the program today, so Lloyd, thank you. So, it's a great, it's a great pleasure and honor to be asked. Thank you very much, Rabbi. Thank you. Well, today we're talking about the multi-faith memorial at St. Paul's Cathedral, uh, which is an incredible initiative uh, that you've uh, been heavily involved with, and now uh, Prince Charles has endorsed. Can you tell us a little about the project and how you got involved, please? Uh, uh, it's been a really wonderful project. Uh, to have helped make happen, particularly in the current climate. But from a sort of interfaith point of view, it's um, obviously that's been a, a cornerstone of the whole project, but actually it's, it's been a bit of a journey, a bit of a strange journey, uh, which began uh, about three years or so ago uh, when I got asked by a friend to come and uh, come to Westminster Abbey and to come and look at a project that uh, they, he was involved with, which was actually the first building project at Westminster Abbey for 275 years. Uh, and uh, they were building what's called the Triforium Tower up the uh, Parliament side of the building, which is essentially a, a staircase and a, and a lift, which takes people up to the first floor of the Abbey, which sits about 90 feet above the Abbey floor. Uh, which they were going to turn into what's now opened as the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Galleries, from which they were going to, going to display all the artifacts they have at Westminster Abbey that nobody ever gets to see. Wow. So that morning, my, you know, my wife said to me, you know, Sarah said, you know, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to, go to Westminster Abbey. She said, what are you going there for? And that, that's strange. And I, said, I'm going to, I didn't really know what to expect, but I went to see it. And I came home that day, and she said, you know, what was, what was the Abbey all about? I said, well, actually, it's, it's quite an interesting project. And I said, I think you've got to remember that this is not any old church. This is our national church. This is the seat of the coronation of our kings and queens. Um, and don't think church, think museum. Um, and to cut a long story short, we, we ended up supporting this project. It was a 24 million pound project. Um, and there was something like 30 odd donors who supported it. And of the 30 odd donors who supported it, there were probably, I think, six Jewish families out of the 30 who, who supported it. Wow. Uh, so, you know, we sort of, as a community, we, you know, we punch above our weight, certainly in the sort of wider world. And that's really amazing that you're, that you're doing that in such a uh, communal fashion. You know, not, the Notre Dame, uh, project as well seems to have strong Jewish involvement and, and, and it's important that we are out there and part of the wider community so the, the community knows that we are integral. Well, I think it was really interesting because uh, as we got into this project, uh, early one Friday morning in December, must be now about three years ago, the Prince of Wales, who was coincidentally the patron of that project, came to lay the foundation stone. Uh, and I had, we'd been invited, there was a few of us there, I was there, I was with another one of my fellow Jewish donors, slightly older than me, slightly older than me, and we were walking through the Abbey and we're joking, you know, what are two nice Jewish boys walking through Westminster Abbey for, and we're sort of, you, know, you had to see the funny side of it, and, um, and then he stopped me and he said, you know Lloyd, 
he said, I think it's really important that we do this because he said, I see this as a way of saying thank you to this country, which opened its arms to our forefathers all those generations ago yeah. and gave them an opportunity to make of their lives what they will in an open and free democratic society. And, um, and I thought that was, a, that was a lovely sort of way to encapsulate the, the whole involvement. And um, we all, actually all the donors ended up uh, in this new sort of building project. Uh, there's a particular part of it where there's some glass windows and we each have a little stained glass window. All the donors have a little stained glass window with their name on at Westminster Abbey, which is, you know, is, is special. So, and, and it, it sort of was a relationship that began from there. I came to know the Dean of St. Paul's, uh, a lovely man called John Hall, who actually he retired in, in November. Um, and I get invited to special services like the 600th anniversary of the Battle of Agincourt and the, the 100th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme and the Commonwealth Day service. And, uh, and in fact, I took uh, my two daughters to the last Commonwealth Day service, uh, which is an amazing experience. Anyway. They've, they've really um, made, made a point of, of marking the occasions, I think, Westminster Abbey uh, I think that that's uh, one of the projects uh, from a ritual perspective and a communal perspective that the current administration feels is a way to uh, establish who Westminster Abbey is. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it has a, you know, it has a role in our national heritage and spirit that, you know, be, is beyond just Westminster and London. Right. And, um, and I think also, you know, from, uh, if I put my Jewish community hat on at the moment, you know, I think it's also very good that as a community, you know, we are, you know, we are what, 270,000 Jews, something like that in this, in this country, you know, and, you know, the community does magnificent work to support its own. But I also think it's important that, you know, as a community, we're seen to be supporting the wider community across the country as well. Absolutely. And historically, not just in this country, but I suspect in every country, you know, the Jews have sort of punched above their weight uh, in that respect. So this relationship developed, then what do you know, about 18 months ago, uh, I got approached by St. Paul's Cathedral, who had heard that I was interested in, you know, big church projects, I, well, I don't know what <laughs> it was, but, and they said, you know, could they come and talk to me and seek my advice and stuff? And, and they had ambitions and, you know, the two great iconic religious institutions in, in not just London, but this country are Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's Cathedral. And I, and I said, of course, and they came to see me and I met the Dean and we talked about their plans. And, and one thing led to another. And then about I don't know, four or five months ago, I, I was asked if I would join a development committee that they were just forming. And um, I said, well, I'd be delighted to help. And then fatefully, about five weeks ago, I was on one of these Zoom calls with the head of development and uh, 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 the guy who's going to be the chairman of this new development committee. And we were talking about future plans and things. And, and of course, the, the whole COVID-19 you know, situation was taking over the country and we were all in lockdown and, and we didn't know quite what that meant for, for, for in terms of the plans. but. But then she said, she said that, you know, she just wanted to let us know that she'd had this project sort of just landed on her desk, figuratively speaking, which had resulted from a conversation between the Bishop, the Bishop of London um, and the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral. And the idea was that St. Paul's Cathedral, with all this terrible tragedy going on, St. Paul's Cathedral should create a virtual book of remembrance all those people who had died and indeed are yet to die um, as a result of uh, COVID-19. And she said that um, she'd just been given this project and obviously, you know, it was, it was very important. Um, now, who, who, who had given her the project? Had this been to... internal? Yeah, so this had been a conversation between the Bishop of London, Bishop Sarah Mullally, uh, and the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral. And St. Paul's, St. Paul's Cathedral has historically had this role of being, of being the, the, the nation's remembrancer 
for great occasions or great events uh, and particularly great tragedies. And that in order to do something, they just felt there was this void, this unmet need from people who were dying as a result of this virus at a time when, you know, as we all know, funerals are severely restricted. In many cases, people never got a chance to say goodbye to their, to their loved ones. Many of them died alone. And this was an important initiative. And I said, this is, you've got to do this. You have to go do this. She said, well, the problem is, she said, you know, we've got no budget. We've got no money. We've had to furlough a whole bunch of our staff. So we've got no resource. And I don't know quite how to go about making this happen quickly. And I said, look, you know, this is too important a project to let those <laughs> problems get in the way. Absolutely. Uh, look, you know, I don't know what it can cost, but I'll underwrite it. I'll sponsor it. Wow. We're to get on with it. Do you want me to make some calls and get some people to come in and start making this happen? Because what it involves is obviously the, the building of a website, the design of the website. Uh, we had to bring in uh, some commu communication experts in order to get ready for the launch. Uh, they wanted to record the choir and turn that into a little music video, uh, which would go on the website. Uh, we had a discussion about, you know, it would be great to have some overarching message from somebody important. I said, look, you know, the best person you really could go to would be Prince Charles because Prince of Wales, you know, he has a, a long established track record in interfaith work and bringing communities together um, and I'm sure you know if we well I hope if we ask him you know he'll, he'll get it and he'd be happy to do it and, and I was happy to help facilitate that as well because you know we got all this done in about four or five weeks Amazing. and a cold standing start so in terms of you know that it was Yes, there were financial costs involved. They had to bring staff back from furlough in order to help deal with it. I, I paid for that. Oh, wow. uh, there were some other costs as well, but also a lot of the companies who came to the project, you know, I, pe companies I knew, people I knew, some of them Jewish led. And I said, look, here's the project, we need help. And they, you know, they rose to the, the challenge magnificently. And in many cases, they did it on a pro bono basis. Amazing. So it wasn't just a combination of, of paying for costs. It was also, you know, the willingness of these companies to devote, devote their expertise and time um, sort of free of charge. Right. And but I see that it's that um, at the moment it's virtual, but there's a view to making something um, tangible down the road. So at the moment, because this is all happening now all around us, every day we read more statistics and there's more tragedies and terrible stories. Yeah, the important thing is to get this up and running now. The key aspect of it was that this book of remembrance should be for people of all faiths and none. Interesting. And you know, as I've said, uh, you know, my very involvement is a testimony to the interfaith uh, aspect of this. Um, so they, they know you're Jewish? Oh, sure, sure. I mean, if you, uh, if you see, if you read the press release, down the bottom there's a note and it says that's sponsored by uh, Jewish businessmen and philanthropists, which I encourage them to put Excellent. because I wanted, you know, we wanted people to know that this wasn't just a Christian initiative. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and, um, and yes, so, and the idea is down the road that there should be a physical memorial uh, actually inside the cathedral. Uh, the idea is that um, they've identified uh, there's a there's an entrance a door which was bombed during the Second World War, and it was sort of sort of sorted out. But they've got to, to overdue to, they've got to do some work to it, right. and a port or portico has been designed. And you know we all thought actually why don't we make this you know the permanent memorial? So this will be. They haven't decided the final name, but it will be simplistically, as you know, the, the name of the project, the, the name of this book is called Remember Me, Remember Me. The whole project is called Remember Me. Right. Uh, and this will be the Remember Me entrance of the Remember Me porch. And in, in the passage, passing of time, 
as and when they can get into the cathedral and progress the whole thing, the idea is this will become the permanent memorial. That's incredible. Those, so when you say all those, we're talking those London, we're talking England? The country, the UK. Country. This initiative is not going to bring anyone, anyone's loved ones back. But all, what it will hopefully do is, you know, rather than being a statistic or a name or someone who never got a proper funeral, who never got to say the proper goodbyes, it will give them a, you know, a permanent place in the history of this country to be memorialized through the, the virtual uh, book of remembrance and then indeed through the, the physical uh, uh, memorial porch memorial in, in the cathedral and will give them you know, a, a special and important place in the history of the country in a way that, that just gives some meaning to it and that um, hopefully people will, who are still grieving you know families will feel that you know as tragic as it all as it all is that something at least something a little special came out of it yeah so tell me do you have to do families have to uh register their loved ones or does it happen automatically based on the government's um, um no, 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 no. No, it's 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 the initiative is entirely with the families so it's a website you go onto the website which is uh, remember me 2020.co.uk and if you want to submit uh, a member of your family you just go onto the submission page and you submit some basic details uh if you you are able to put a message on uh up to i think we've said 220 characters uh and you are also able to put a photograph on if you'd like to and if you don't want to or don't have a photograph then you don't have to do that either there's different backgrounds there's a candle background and other backgrounds um, and if you go onto the site you'll see already i mean i think we've already got i don't know 16 1700 since friday when we in that when we launched it oh, 16, wow. 17, with um uh, people on the site um we went to a number of, we went to the principal faith leaders to get their sort of endorsement of the project so you know i was thrilled that uh chief rabbi was uh yeah. said gave his sort of support to it and sent a very uh, a very lovely message and we went to um to uh, head column of the catholics uh sikh head of sikh uh, community uh hindu sunni muslims shia muslims um and you know we've got a broad body of interfaith support and everybody you know thought it was a an amazing initiative well, that's fantastic. You know, and that really is heartwarming to know, first of all, Yashikov to the chief rabbi for endorsing and supporting the project and, and to all of these uh, faith leaders. It really speaks to the fabric of, of, of our society uh, that we have all of these faith leaders who are willing to uh, work together to stand shoulder to shoulder and not to say well you know that well that's not my um house of worship so i'm not going to be involved and to have that endorsement and those words of encouragement uh, i think is encouraging to all of us uh about the society the country in which we live and and hopefully we'll go on to continue to uh warm relations between our uh different faith groups and different cultures uh that make up this this great country that we are so blessed to be a part of well, I think one of the standout characteristics of this whole dreadful experience, uh, particularly coming so soon after the polarization of the whole Brexit uh, debate, one of the great things about this time is that communities at all levels in all sorts of different ways have come together. Uh, whether it's delivering you know, young people, delivering food to old people, or I mean, just a huge number of initiatives. Uh, and and I think, you know, as far as the religious side of things are con is concerned, I hope this, this project is a manifestation of that, of that similar uh, community spirit. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Sir Lloyd, for everything you do for the Jewish community and the wider community, the multi-faith community, and for this country. Uh, we are so blessed and honored to, to have you uh, here as, as a national figure, as a Jewish communal figure uh, that we all admire and look up to so much, and as a, 
in, integral um, member of our uh, HGSS community in, uh, in terms of your family ties and uh, we're blessed to, to have you with us. So thank you, Saloid. You're very kind and thank you. And thank you for everything you do for the community too. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Friedman and Sir Dorfman, on informing us about this incredible initiative. For more information, go to rememberme2020.co.uk. Thank you. Now, as we come up to Shavuot, we think about the festival of when we received the Torah, the Torah which we received thousands of years ago. And we have it today only because it's always been passed down from one generation to the next. We're about to meet an incredible lady, Anita Katz, who regularly Zooms four generations. She's got a great grandchildren Zooming here, it's phenomenal. And we are now gonna go over to her together with our members, Lawrence and Mim Harding, to see how she's doing. Anita. Hello. Oh yeah. my, thank you. I don't think I've ever zoomed a hundred and four year old before. No, this is this is first time. Hundred and ten, yes, but hundred and four. <laughs> yes. so, so, so Anita zooms with her grandkids and great grandkids every Wednesday afternoon. That's yes. amazing. Like the tech granny. Rabbi Guttenkag, you want to introduce yourself to, to Anita? Yeah, hi, Anita. I, well, we met last year at your birthday party at the Shul when you were 103. It was a lovely tea party and you, you, you were there and you spoke just so wonderfully and positively about all the blessings you have in your life. It was such an inspiration. And I'm sorry we missed your party this year when you turned 104, but we're all cheering for you here. 104. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 104 and six months. Oh, yeah, don't forget the six months. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's incredible to see you like this. It's amazing. Yes, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. So, how, how do you, how, what, what do you do during the day to keep busy? Nothing special. <laughs> A very quiet day. You were you were in the the music business. Did you play any musical instruments yourself? I can't play music. Yeah, a wonderful ear for music. Yeah. I know Jimmy Page very well. I was the one that made Jimmy Page a very important person. I was the one that made him famous. <laughs> it's awesome. Not only Jimmy Page, a top ah. drummer, Jimmy Nichol. He joined the Beatles where Ringo Starr was ill and was sent to hospital. We recommended Jimmy Nichol and he became famous, a top, top drummer. Oh, so many. Wow. You, when you Zoom with your grandkids, Anita, do you talk, you, what do you discuss? What they've been doing, telling them how beautiful they look. True. It really is all wonderful to see them, just as it is wonderful to see you now thank you this really is very very special thank very you. special indeed we feel very blessed yeah i can't tell you how wonderful it is for me really at my age although i must confess no way no way do I feel my age? That's true. At the Thanks. end of the day, Hashem, now every day I say, every day I say, for Hashem. We feel very blessed to have, to be able to zoom in with you. 
So thank you for, for agreeing to, to be on our Norrisley TV. Oh, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to speak to you. How much I appreciate this speaking to you, seeing you. It really is a joy, a pleasure, and a gift from Hashem. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to Clarita as well. Oh, you're helping welcome. us. Thank you, Clarita. You're welcome. Thank you so much for making this all possible. <laughs> I endorse that, Rita. Absolutely. She's good. And thank you for to Mark and Ru Ruben for joining us. So Mark is in is in London and Ruben, are you as well or you're in Israel? In Israel. In Israel. Is that Robin? Yeah. Huh? Yes, that's Robin. And that's my child in Robin. <laughs> He's the Robin, Remember, if you go back <laughs> over the years, when you used to come and stay with me. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. We used to go out. We used to pick what, I don't know, we would take strawberries. Strawberries. The fruit farms where. Strawberries. That was it. Strawberries. strawberries. Whatever it was, it was a lot of fun. There we go. And we remember the Robin, we used to go on the farm. Do you remember the railway? There was a railway. Wow. Oh, yeah. Going back the last one I went on. Anyway, hello, it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to see you, to speak to you. Yeah. And all I Thank can you. say is, the Rock of Shem, I'm still here. To have those memories, it's wonderful, wonderful, and it's wonderful to speak to you. You look gorgeous. You all look gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, speaking to all of you. Thank you for wanting to speak to me. That is the special thing. Thank you. I think the special thing is that you said you say Baruch Hashem every day. That is special. I would like she to. She does. She does. I'd like to speak to you again very, very soon. <laughs> would you like to send a special message to Avrami? Special message for our cousin? It's my pleasure to have the privilege of knowing him. He visited me in my home, which was another great privilege. Thank you for me. Lawrence, yeah. do you know the answer to that? Why your mom why your mom hasn't played an instrument yet? She has an incredible air to music. I don't know. She was a very capable businesswoman. And in okay. fact, she was the businesswoman where my father was a creative person. So it was a, an ideal partnership in many ways. You know? right. And it worked very well. And my father always used to be at the recording studios um, around London, and my mother used to be in the office arranging everything. Uh, so she was the business. She, she really was, was the she, business. From the, from the commercial aspect, she really was the business. Mm. She was a very capable person. She was a good, you can definitely see that. Thank you. Thank you. An amazing grandmother. Yes, yeah, she was an amazing grandmother. Yep. And and until very recently, up until a hundredth year, uh, very much a, a wonderful great grandmother. Obviously, she's pretty much housebound now. Well, I think she's she's definitely a, uh, still a great, a wonderful, amazing great grandmother. She yeah. what really? other great grandma zooms in with their kids? It's, it's that's like you know for them to try to figure it out. The fact that she's able to communicate like this is amazing. Yeah, that's my nice, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, as mother-in-laws go, I couldn't have a better mother-in-law. Oh, right? that is a compliment. I mean it. I really mean it. And I know that she truly, truly loves me. It's, it's very special. So nice to hear that. Yep. Yep. As mother-in-laws go, she's fine. Yeah. Beautiful to hear. How is Meme as a daughter-in-law, Anita? 
wonderful. Oh. There you go. Yeah, got it. <laughs> 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 it's completely Check her out, apparently. Dogs. We have a wonderful, wonderful mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationship. Oh. She gives me a lot of affection and respect. Remember, respect is number one. And affection. And I try my best to show her my affection for her, my respect for her. And she's a wonderful daughter in law. Thank you, Mim. Thank you. Beautiful. Hey, Beautiful. Mim, that was alive to the whole nation. We all know that now. <laughs> it was a close call. <laughs> Bye now. Bye -bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, Lauren. Thank you all. Thank organizing you. it all. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you very much for, for organizing have a, it. Back have now. a great week. We have something special to share with you from Jimmy Page himself to Anita. Charlie Katz, Anita Katz first heard about me as a studio musician. I'd been headhunted out of uh, uh, a club in London where I'd been doing a residence as an in, in the interval band every Thursday. And uh, I was asked to play on a, on a record. Now this is curious because at this time I was signed up as an art student. I was, I was an art student. And uh, I started to get calls from Charlie Katz and inevitably Nita as well through to my to my home of course in these days there weren't mobiles so the yeah the way that you do this was uh, I'd either get I'd either get a session uh, given to me while I was attending a session or they would call home and my mother would take them and I knew I worked a lot but just about nearly all the sessions are saying Charlie Katz, Nita Katz. It gave me this wonderful studio discipline and the ability to be able to read music and then write music as well. It's, it set me up in good stead for Led Zeppelin, etc. Another great. Wow, what an incredible interview. Thank you, Lawrence and Mean, for introducing us to your mom, Mrs. Anita Katz. Uh, what, what an incredible woman. You can truly see how she really, you know, picked out these stars even before they became stars. Very powerful. Wasn't she incredible? She was amazing. I remember when she came into the shul last year for a party and she said the same thing tonight. You know, she said every day I say Baruch Hashem. It's incredible. Such a nice positive attitude. The Hakar Satov she has. Constantly saying thank you, thank you for, for allowing her to be on our show. And we were like, we were the one honored. Really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it's an honor for us. And a nice shout out for our Brummy there. Um, here's the Brummy's response. Hi, from me, Avrami. For me, visiting Anita, someone who's lived to be more than one century, was just such a privilege and such an honor to have been part of the select few that was allowed to visit you, Anita. So, um, how wonderful, and may you be blessed to live in good health and in good company with your lovely, lovely family for many, many, many more years. And uh, wishing everyone Chag Sameach, good Yom Tov, and can't wait to be allowed to visit again. All our love. Thank you. I've sometimes wondered about Shavuot. The Torah doesn't tell us when it is. Right, for Pesach, it says on the 15th of Nisan, thou shalt eat matzah. Uh, on the 1st of Tishri, you shall sound the shofar. On the 10th of Tishri, you shall fast. On the 15th of Tishri, you shake the lulav and the esrug and you eat in the sukkah. Right, but Shavuot, it doesn't give you the date. I mean, we know it's the 6th of Siva. It doesn't say that. It just says count 50 days from when you bring the Omer. And on the 50th day, it shall be a Chag. But it doesn't say the date. And I think the reason is as follows. I once heard from a Rabbi, Reb, Reb Zev Lef, who said that all the, the mitzvahs of each festival those mitzvot only apply on the festival. If I were to go out into my garden now and sit in the sukkah and 
have lunch. It's a lovely thing to do on a summer's day, but it's no mitzvah, right? If I want to have, uh, as we regularly do on a Shabbat during the year, some chopped liver with on a piece of matzah, lovely, there's no mitzvah to eat the matzah. Only on Pesach is a mitzvah to eat. So you might come to think that on Shavuot, when we receive the Torah, on that date, that, because we receive the Torah then, that is when it's a mitzvah to learn Torah any other time. I don't have to, just like there's no mitzvah to shake the lulav any other day of the year. We're not told the date, because the mitzvah to study Torah and to keep the mitzvah and to pass on our tradition applies every single day of the year, and not just on Shavuot. And this year, even normally we would do the Torah learning and teaching in the Shirim on Shavuot. We're doing it the day before, so you can all join in live. And we have a packed program, the week, the whole week before, including tonight. So Rabbi, do you want to tell us what we've got on, please? Yes, absolutely. It's, and it's, I guess it's on the year of the barbecue that we we're supposed to have all night learning. <laughs> but now you can have a barbecue every night in, in your own garden. Yeah, that's a mix. <laughs> so yes, we have a packed schedule to um, starting tomorrow night, Tuesday. We have Shavuot in the kitchen. We're learning with two professional chefs on how to eat dairy. We'll learn about what it means, why we eat dairy on Shavuot. Tune in tomorrow night with uh, yours truly. And we also followed um, by an, a special for Suburb Link. Now Suburb Links is a special group for 20 to 30 year olds um, with, and Rabbi Guttentag will have a discussion with Jonathan Goldstein, the chairman of JLC. So that's tomorrow night in the Zoom. And uh, Wednesday, we have an all this special women's event, but open to men and women and of all ages with uh, Rabbi Racheli Frankel all the way from Israel. We'll talk about the women's studies uh, in the in the through the ages but when when did women actually study start begin studying the talmud the torah so that should be quite interesting followed by our chachmat lev honorees and then on thursday we have a jam-packed schedule we will begin at five o'clock on thursday uh where i will be meeting rabbi yy rubenstein renowned speaker lives in new york i knew him of course from Man his manchester days and we will be discussing how laughter can help us through tough times. We all need a bit of laughter. So it'll be a great discussion and a great cheer. That's at five o'clock, uh, immediately followed by the Creator Torah for Shavuot and the Book of Ruth. Uh, then we've got the children sing along, join in for that. We have the Yizkar and Sermon. Uh, then Rabbi Friedman meets the Chief Rabbi of South Africa, Rabbi Warren Goldstein in discussion. And this will be concluded by our cousin of Romy's Kabbalat Yom Tov. So from 5 p.m. until the commencement of Yom Tov, full program. Please full join program. But it doesn't stop there because, you know, as a community, we have an incredible initiative to finish the entire Bible, the entire Tanakh together. And there are a few chapters left. You can sign up to, to choose one chapter at any level, whether you just read it, whether you study it in depth. We're going to complete the completed on Shavuot, so you can take it, do it before, or do it on, and um, this is a great program that hopefully everybody in the community can join in and be a part of, and uh, would hopefully have a siyum to complete it all together. So look out for details for that. That's amazing, thank you. So we're going to finish off now, we'll leave you with a clip from last night's epic show by Hazan Avrami. If you haven't watched it, it's on our Facebook page, and if you, even if you have watched it, I'm sure you'd love to see this clip again about tradition. So I wish you all Chag Sameach and Good Yom Tov. Good Yom Tov. Tradition, 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 tradition. Because of our tradition, we've kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. How to sleep, how to eat, how to work, how to wear clothes. 
For instance, we always keep our heads covered and always wear a little prayer shawl. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? I'll tell you. I don't know, but it's a tradition. And because of traditions, every one of us knows who he is and what God expects him to do. Day and night must scramble for a living, feed a wife and children, say his daily prayers. Who has the right as master of the house to have the final word at home? The Papa! The Papa! Tradition! The Papa! The Papa! Tradition! Know the way to make a proper home, a quiet home, a kosher home. Who must raise the family and run the home? So Papa's free to read the holy book. The mama, the mama. Tradition, the mama, the mama. Tradition. At three I started Hebrew school, at ten I learned a trade. I hear they've picked a bride for me, I hope she's pretty. And who does mama teach to mend and tend and fix? Preparing me to marry whoever papa picks. The daughters, the daughters. Tradition, the papas, the mamas, the sons, the daughters. Tradition. Tradition, 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 tradition. 